What's going on, my friends? It's your boy, Jade on Trades with Team Bull Trading, and I'm officially excited to announce the launch of the Team Bull Podcast. This has been a long time in the making, requested by thousands, and we are finally live. So on this podcast, we are going to be doing a wide range of things with an emphasis on trading, day trading, and all of the above. We're also going to be bringing on entrepreneurs, different life situations, and things that you can relate to. I think there's a lack of transparency in the trading industry and in the, in the entrepreneurship industry and everything in between. So my main goal with this is to show you real people, real results, how Team Bull has helped other people learn how to trade, level up their life, get into fitness, all things of the above, and overall live a better life and a more financially free life. So with that, we're on Instagram, jdun underscore trades, Team Bull Trading 303. I'm on Twitter, jdun trades, and at Team Bull Trading on TikTok. And most importantly, right here on YouTube with tons of free game, free courses, and everything in between when it comes to trading. So today's episode number one, I have Tyler here with me. He is a Team Bull student, a Team Bull mastermind student who has an incredible story from prison to becoming a profitable trader. Not only that, he's a business owner. He's a real person. He's worked full-time jobs and everything that, you know, the trading industry and online doesn't really show you. A lot of times you see, you know, worker turned trader that made millions of dollars. And a lot of times it's scripted. It's not real. And the main purpose of this show is to show you real people, real results, and show you what it takes to really become a profitable trader and some hurdles that people go through. So Tyler, so nice having you here. Team will mastermind student, discord member, and overall hustler, amazing person. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Jadon. I'm really excited to be here. This is a, an amazing thing that you guys got going on with Team Bull and then rolling it into a podcast. That's a really good idea. I'm glad that I'm on the first one. Yeah, well, welcome to the show. And just from the little bit you've told me about yourself and your journey with Team Bull, your personal journey, it's not only to me incredible, but I think to everyone else listening to this, it's going to be very inspiring, You know, f filled with hope and just Real stuff that I think a lot of people are going to be able to really relate to. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy for me even to think back about, like, you know, getting released from prison and not knowing what I was going to do or how I was going to make money or if I was going to be able to get a job or anything to to getting a job and then learning to trade while I'm in the halfway house and not being able to actually act on the things that I've learned until I got my own place and then work in, you know, 50 hours a week, 60 hours a week, consistently staying up late, trying to learn, waking up early, losing money, learning. And then <laughs> that went on for a long period of time before I finally sat down and like had to reevaluate what I was doing. And along the path of learning trading, it also, you know, it helped me in my personal life, I think get to the spot where I was offered to buy out one of the owners at this restaurant that I'm at and really everything goes hand in hand, the discipline with trading, the discipline in life. And a lot of that I learned from you guys over at team bull. That's, that's awesome, dude. So I want you to tell your full story, but starting from the beginning, you were telling me how you were sitting in prison. You wanted to learn how to trade, finally got out of prison, started learning. And a few things that you've done is you obviously joined our Team Bull community and you took yeah. the Team Bull Mastermind. But before the Mastermind, you had been trading and I think you got yourself in a hole almost, what was it, $7,000? Yep, $7,000. So, <laughs> you, so you'd wake up and, yeah. as you said, lose money, right. which many of us uh, start doing, myself right. included, when I first started trading. And so I guess when you were first starting trading, how did going into an educational program like the Mastermind and just in general, like learning, leveling up your education help you and Specifically, how did Team Bull help you with that? So when I took the mastermind, really, I was on the fence about it. I remember I was out in New Mexico with my girlfriend. We just like had a weekend getaway. And it was when you first started dropping like the hints that you were going to do a mastermind program. And I really wanted to get into it. I've been following Grizzly and you and GD and Brandon and all you guys just kind of watching what you guys do on the day to day. And... I just decided, you know what, what's going to hurt? I'm already down a bunch of money. <laughs> what's the money's just going to hopefully roll around and I can learn something from it. And so in the beginning, you know, it's like a little hard to follow, especially if you've been trading already, because it's a lot of, it's real beginner oriented, but then you start getting into it. And the ideas that I had were the things that you guys were talking about, but you really broke it down in a way that is very easy to understand and it's easy to duplicate, but you have to be able to tie those knots together yourself. Like 
you can't just copy the exact thing that you guys or Grizzly or anybody's doing in the in the masterminds that you guys make the framework to to be able to build your own system and do it yourself. And I don't think you won't be successful if you can't figure it out and build a system to do it for yourself. But you guys definitely lay more than enough foundation for that to be possible. That's awesome, man. For sure. And, and just hearing that, diving into that even more with the whole education realm, what were some things that you experienced as a beginner trader that was down, you know, up to $7,000 at one yeah. point? Um, basically, you were like back against the wall. What were some mistakes you were making? What was something that you really struggled with before you took that next leap in education? So it was just like I would struggle, you know, over trading, obviously. And like in the beginning, it was just buying calls or going long at a support or going short or buying puts at uh, resistance. That yeah, was, that was <laughs> the uh -huh. other way, the other way. Yeah. Um, and then just kind of learning that you got to be mindful of all those things that are going on on the chart. And it's a lot to it's a lot to think about you know, where price is going, how the volume looks, what, how the candles are closing, where you're at on the chart in a macro perspective. And then once you start under, understanding that that is what you need to be paying attention to, even though it's a lot of stuff, you can start dialing in on areas that are of interest. And then those areas of interest are the ones you want to focus on and, and you learn. So once I figured that out, then I was like, all right, well, now I can make some money. So I would hold positions for so long, and then I'd lose all the profit, and they would go red. And then I would just sit there hoping that they would come back. And then, so that went on for a while. And then I really started to figure out when to push the positions and when my entries were. And I would make a bunch of money, and then I would go in the next day with the mindset, and I guess overconfident that I just made you know $1,000 yesterday. I can make $1,000 today, but that's not always the case. And then I would lose all of it and then some. And then that went on for a few months. And then that's what led me to going into the mastermind. And two things. I think earlier, like a minute ago, you meant to say that you were buying you were buying uh, calls at resistance. Yeah, yep, yep. And and which is such a big thing. You know, you see so many new traders trying to short support, which is right. what we don't do. Right. And you know, buying calls at resistance. So yeah. simple things like that and learning when to enter, when not to enter super big. And second, we were talking about earlier that you remember having what was previously your biggest day, $1,035. Yeah. You, know, you just had to think your biggest day yesterday, which was $1,300, yep, I correct. believe. Yeah. Congrats on that again. Yeah. But your previous biggest day, you made $1,000. And this is something that so many traders struggle with. Made your $1,000. And in your mind, you were telling me, you're like, I got cocky. You're like, damn, I made a thousand a day. Right. I'm, I can do this every day. And then what ended up happening the next I had day? I lost all of it. Man, I think I lost like seven or eight hundred of that, and then in one in the one trade, and then you know, of course, I decided to revenge trade, and then I just ended up losing all of that thousand I made the previous day plus some. Yep, that's something that so many traders struggle with, and just I think it's a mixture of things: it's experience, it's education, and really building the discipline. Right, which it sounds like you've done right I've over the trying. past fifteen months and getting yeah. past that hump. Yeah, and uh, even like today, this morning. So yesterday I made that 1300 and then this morning, you know, I wanted to make, obviously you, everybody wants to make money, but the market wasn't really working with me. And I ended up just closing the day out with $80 profit, which I'm more than happy for because at least I didn't lose any money. And you haven't had a red day since February 7th, right? Yeah, correct. Since February 7th. And just a little, little backdrop on you. I want to go into like your past. Yeah, for sure. You started this year with $470. Yep. That was after being down like seven grand last year yep. around that area. Right, right. Now you're up to just about profiting $7,000 this year. You're in the green. Yeah, You've correct. wiped out all those losses and some. And some. And I'm in profits. That is. Off of $470. Yep. Yeah. That's that's incredible. So what is one piece of advice? And I want to get into your past and, you know, right. how you got to this point. You know, things about you, some personal stuff um, that led you to trading. What is one thing you would recommend to someone with like a five hundred dollar account that wants to build it and wants to turn five hundred dollars into you know I guess like seven thousand like you have now? I think really my one piece of advice would to be focus on one setup and don't just go acting on it with your five hundred dollars. Just pay attention. The same setup could present itself multiple times in the day, and sometimes they're more valuable than others. And just kind of figure out which ones are the most profitable setups to go and be in. And like at the beginning of the year, I was making like 
fifty dollars, twenty dollars, I'd make ninety dollars. And then that just went on, you know, in a few weeks of that going on, then your count's up two thousand dollars. And then you can go in with a little bit heavier position size and you're a little more picky about the trades that you take, and then don't overtrade. Really, if you get ninety bucks, take the ninety bucks, and then they and then it just starts to grow from there. Next thing you know, you got two thousand in your account. And you can pull down one hundred and fifty, three hundred bucks a day, and uh, just stay at a consistent place. Like if you make three hundred dollars, don't shoot for a thousand. Just take the three hundred, wait for the next day, and just keep doing that. And because I've had red trades, I've just been real careful with my risk management and trying to keep as much money as I can. And I've given profits back, but. I haven't gone red on the days for it's like five or six weeks now. That's awesome. And especially with building a $500 account, like especially you have to be such a sniper and so, so disciplined yes, for sure. with that. So I think that everything you just said is so, this reigns so true with so many people. And maybe even people have like, you know, like four or five, 10,000 to start with. But if you can't build, you know, 500 to $1,000 account, if you can't have conviction and discipline with that, you're going to go out and blow yeah. Five, 10 grand. I deposited five grand in my account one time. I think the next day I lost 2000 of it and I had no business putting the five grand in there. I just was like, I had been doing well, right? Making a couple hundred bucks a day. Why not put a decent amount of money in there? Cause I'll just do the exact thing that I'm doing, but with more money. And that's just not how it works. It's a lot more rewarding when you can build an account versus putting 10 grand in there and making five grand on it the next day. But if you build up from, a, from nothing, then that money is a lot more valuable to you, you know, when you get up to a $7,000, $10,000 account if you start with nothing. And the thing is, too, is you're going to respect that risk more. Like right. the biggest thing I see with traders is people come to me and they say, Jay Dunn, like I was doing so good. I was making 20, 50, 100 bucks a day learning, which is great money, especially while learning, right? I finally, and then they say, I finally up my position size. I want to <laughs> go bigger. And what happens literally every single day? freaking time wiped it out you wipe it out <laughs> because when you increase your position size it's just instantly more risk more emotion right which is something that it sounds like you've you've done a really good job with and you know like not trying to say okay you know i turned five or 470 into seven grand now i'm gonna go full port in my seven grand or six grand like, right no no definitely not i really and where i learned that was from grizzly so i had a problem with averaging down for for a while because I was riding a fine line of like, I was doing it at the right times, but then I was not doing it at the right times and it would just go against me. And then Grizzly always talks about, uh, he'll average down once, maybe twice, if it's still in his zone or in the area. And then, so once I started paying more attention to that, I realized if I get a better entry in the first place, giving myself room to add to the position, I may not get the full position size, but for those trades that I do get to the full position size, those are the ones that I'm going to make the money on. What you make like 80% of your profits off of 20% of your trades. Yep. And I have learned that for sure over this last three months. You have 80% of your profits off like 20% of your trades. Right. And that's what's so big too is letting your winners run and keeping your losers small. Right. The biggest scam in the trading industry is this quote right here. It's nobody went broke taking profit. You know, <laughs> right. see green, take green. Because the right. problem is, and I'm sure, you know, as a, you know, 15-month, 20-month trader, you'll know this, like, is that if you see green every time and you your, your emotions get heightened, hey, oh, my gosh, I have to take my profit. I have to take my profit. Right. The problem is you have small win, small win, small win, small win, big loss that just yep. crushes. And that's what I was doing, too, for a while, just because I think you get in that state of mind of, like, I've been losing for so long. Once you see green and once you see profit and you're not used to it, you're like, you're, you get afraid to lose the money that you just mm -hmm. made. So you just take it. But if once you can read and look, I have a long ways to go to get to where, where I want to be, but I have been putting in some work and I'm starting to see the fruits from my labors. Um, but once you start to understand market structure and like price and volume, and you can kind of combine all that stuff, you know, when you can stay in for a trade a little bit longer, or if you need to get out of the trade, but that comes with screen time every day and spending an hour or two a day just like on YouTube or looking over charts every day, though. You know, I did it. I've been doing it every day for 15 months now, every day. 
And that's why I wanted to have this interview interview with you. Like, you know, if you would have just said, hey, Jada and I had a $500 account and I full ported and took some <laughs> right. stupid YOLO and made seven grand, like, yeah. that's not important. But you've slowly built this up after being in the red, right. like six, seven grand. Yeah. So like, you, you know, you got that, that, I guess, like confidence shot. Like, damn, like I'm down six, seven grand. Like I'm hurt, like I'm trading smart, but it's just, I'm learning. Right. And you slowly worked your way back and then slowly worked your way to up seven grand. Yeah. Now, like, one bite that's at a really time. cool. And like, that's what everyone, like uh, most people I, you know, teach and like talk to are trying to do. And you did it, yeah. which is incredible, man. It's crazy. Even just waking up in the morning, like I really took one bite at a time until I got it all back. And now I'm like cruising, just trying to repeat the same things every single day. And if the situation presents itself, I, I'm more prepared to act on it now than I have been in the past. But also I know when to stay away like today. Just yep. was not feeling it. I just took the little bit of money and then just shut the computers off and went to the gym. You, you know what you can do. <laughs> you know when to hold. You know when to fold. Right. For it's sure. like with poker. So going backtracking a little bit, you spent some time in prison. Yeah. You know, made some changes to your life. I'd love to hear just like a little bit about your story. You know your upbringing. Um, whatever you're comfortable with sharing with us. Okay. And kind of what got you into trading and what made you want to start learning the skill that you know sure. is life changing. So I just uh, had the not the best upbringing. I had definitely wasn't the worst. There's people out there that have it way worse than I do. But um, I was on my own since I was 16. And, you know, I got into selling drugs. And I didn't really have positive influences in my life. And one thing led to another. Next thing you know, it's probably six or seven years later, I was mixed up with the wrong people. And... <laughs> I was at the wrong place at the wrong time and the feds came and they raided my house and I went to prison for aiding and abetting uh, distribution. Though they didn't find any drugs at my house, there was a video during a drug deal and I was there for it. So they wanted me to cooperate and because I refused to, they hit me with the aiding and abetting and I sat in prison and reevaluated my whole life. And I mean, every day I would pace back and forth in my cell, just thinking like, I, for one, I have to change my life. And two, once I get out of here, I'm putting everything that I have into whatever it is that I can get my hands on that will give me an opportunity to succeed. And probably six or eight months before I got out, I was talking with one of my buddies and he told me about uh, trading. And he said that I think that this would be really good for you. And I just started learning as much as I could about it. And one thing led to another. When I got out, I started researching it on my bus trip to work on my bus trip home and all of the things. And then the next thing, you know, I got out of the halfway house and I bought a laptop and I just put my first trade on. And then after that first trade, it kind of went up for a little bit and I had a feel for it. And then it was just a slow climb down, you know, three red days in a row, small green day, three red days, small green day. We just keep going and going before I realized, like, there's real potential here to make some money, but I do not know what I'm doing. And I got into a few other discords and I was learning the stuff that they were uh, teaching and it's not none of it was bad stuff. They were all real good communities, but it, I just was seeing there was a lot more potential for money to be made than what was being taught in those discords. And eventually I stumbled across team bull trading and Jadon's page. And I just watched them for a while. And one morning, I think I was just taking like a fat loss. I think I was down like a few thousand dollars in one month. And I was just took the leap into the team bull discord. And I started playing around in there and kind of paying attention to what they were doing and the things that they were doing and the ways that they were trading was like, kind of lining up with the ideas that I had of how to maximize what I'm doing with the least amount of effort and mental strain. That's so awesome, dude. And what I really like what you say here is you're not saying I stumbled across team bull and I started taking signals. and That's where I'm at now. You stumbled across team bull and you're like, I like the education these yeah. guys provide. I like the vibe in here. And even to this day, like you were telling me this morning, like there was a few guys taking different trades today. Yep. And you were going with your own bias, with your own conviction. Yep. And you're taking your own tra own trades, but you're using the community to like better your education and get different ideas. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I take I don't even I rarely use the signals that you guys put out. A lot of the times my ideas and the ideas that you grizzly have 
or even Brandon and GD, a lot of those times they all line up. And when they line up, then I have even more conviction in that I was done. <laughs> I had the right idea of what I wanted to do that day. Isn't that the best when it's for like sure. a few different, like, you know, just for our example, you know, Grizzly, Brandon, GD, myself, like you have a few people that you like listening to all the ideas line up and like you had the level marked before right. you had the idea before and you're like, yes, like I found this myself. Obviously people that have been doing this for a long time agree in it as well. Like that's just such a good confidence building. Feeling. Yeah, it really is for builds confidence for when I, you know, we'll take a trade on something that you guys are not watching. And then I just feel confident that what I'm looking at is going to produce a good outcome. And for the most part, they have. I still take red trades, but I have learned <laughs> not to let them run. You can tell. I, I can tell now when when the trade is not going to work out just to cut it. Cut it as fast as as soon as you know it's not going to work out. Just get out of it. You can always reenter. Yep. That's awesome, man. So something we were talking about earlier too along the trading lines was you are buying your steak in the restaurant you're going to own. Yeah. What's it called? It's Bo called Bono's. Bono's. Bono's Italian restaurant. It's over in uh, Golden, Colorado. In Colorado, Italian restaurant. Yeah. What I hear, delicious food. It's amazing. And the reason I mention that is that there's this notion that to be a full-time trader, the term full-time trader, it's all you can do. You have to be trading, 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 and you don't do anything else to make money besides that which I think is BS personally. Right. Like all the best traders I know have multiple streams of income. Why? For one, the market goes up and down. Now you're going to go through times of great trading, times of eh trading. Two, the one thing we have to do as traders is detach from the money. So if your only source of income for, you know, feeding your dog, feeding your wife, husband, you know, feeding yourself, having a roof is trading, that's a lot of stress. For sure. It's a lot of stress. So the reason I bring this up is that You've been able to supplement, you know, you're buying your business, you know, having your other streams of income with your trading. And I just wanted to touch on, like, I guess how that has helped you having other sources of income in your trading and your whole process with that. Right. Well, so honestly, it's a good feeling, you know, when you have been making money outside of your job. And then in, I guess in my situation, like, I'm about to go into this restaurant and for the first couple months, we're not going to take any money from the restaurant because we're just going to, you know, build working capital. We've got some things that we want to fix up and all of that obviously requires money, but we still need money to pay employees and buy food and pay rent and all that stuff. So just knowing that the money that I have saved on top of the little bit of money that I'm making from trading, all of that stuff adds up and it's just going to keep growing. It's just a better, uh, I guess, like state of mind or like kind of, comfort to know that this is not my only income and it's and it goes the other way too like for trading I know that trading isn't my only income like I've been able to save a good amount of money from my job and now soon a uh, business and I'll be owner of that I don't have to rely on trading and then I don't have to fully rely on the business and then once things pan out you know I'll probably go off and do something else because I'm only trading 30 minutes I try not to trade for more than an hour a day. So I'm done 8 30, 9 o'clock at the absolute latest. And then you have your whole day. If you want to go do something fun, sweet. Or if you want to go build another business, <laughs> that's like, what you could do. Like both of us do work yeah. all day. Yeah, yeah. We're like, we don't want to work a nine to five. We'll just work 24 7. Right. Instead. For sure. <laughs> it's way more rewarding that way. Yeah. So I, I just, I, I hate that notion. And we talked about this earlier too. I hate seeing people. You know, gurus put out ads like, yo, come buy my course, come join my community and I'll have you quitting your nine to five in two months. Like it's just, right. it's, it's terrible for sure. It's not, it's, it's untrue and it's very detrimental to people's trading. So I love hearing from people like you that, you know, are building a business, have other hustles and, you know, trading is supplementing that. And as you, you know, grow your restaurant, as you grow your hustles and gain experience trading, you're, you're just going to make more and more, right. You're going to get better and better, you know, better disciplined, you know, better conviction and you're just going to make more and more, which is, yeah, which is a good feeling. It's exciting. Even thinking about the possibilities that can come from all this and those possibilities have really been circling through my head since I've made back <laughs> all my losses and now I'm in profit. And I'm like, even if I go through a red period, I know that I have learned something that I can turn it around. You know, I've got, I guess not overconfident, but I am confident to know that I can adjust any errors and build. <laughs> so on the topic of errors, 
if you had to give one piece of advice from when you were down at your just your worst of your trading, like you just took the trade that put you to negative <laughs> seven thousand, you're like just bat, you know all your anxieties running running rabbit in your head, self doubt. Like, what is the one thing that helped you keep going and turn that around? So I think a lot of people just, are like, are in that boat too. You know, like crap, I've been getting drilled by the market. I'm thinking about quitting. Like, how do you keep going? Honestly, all the people, and I know this isn't for everyone, but all the people on Instagram that are posting those gains, like, I know that it's possible. I'll sit there and I'll watch the options chain, and I see how the options fluctuate. Like, I know it's possible, and I know that <laughs> with enough time and enough pain, I will figure out how to, to get my piece of that. And I, I don't want all of it. I just want a little bit. You know, and there's people posting all these massive gains, and it's just... In my mind, I just think that I can do it if they can do it. And then yes. I sit there and I watch it on the computer. I literally watch the option just gain, you know, 50%, 100%, even 20%. And I just think I can do this. And I just keep figuring it out. And you had mentioned that like one of your big lights on moments for wanting to trade was that you were watching the Tesla option chain. Yeah. And you saw a contract go from $400 to $900 yep. in like 10 minutes. And you're yeah. like... If that just went from four hundred dollars to nine hundred dollars, I can get my I can get my fifty percent out of that. I For can get sure. my seventy percent out of that. And you were willing to do whatever it took, learn from whoever you could to do that. And yep, and that's why you be the mastermind for sure. Everything that you guys teach in there, a bunch of different strategies, but I just took a few pieces from everyone, you know, and kind of just built, I guess, my own strategy. And a lot of the times they all line up together, but it, you got to be able to think for yourself because if, if you're just trying to get signals from someone, then you don't know if the trade's good or if the trade's mm -hmm. bad, and then you don't know what to do at that point. Like you, you got to learn. You got to put the time in to learn, and I promise it's worth it. Even not the money, but just the reward of like being able to do it is is probably the best reward of it. And what you just said, that even if you're listening to the best signal ever, like let's say, you know, me, Jay, and I have a 99% win rate, which I don't know real trader does. Right. <laughs> uh, but just for sake of conversation, I have a 99% win rate. Even if you're listening to me as a beginner trader, you're going to hear me say, you know, hey, I'm looking at spy calls or spy puts. And the second you press that buy button, you're still going to be freaking out. Your armpits are going to be sweaty. Your hands are going to be sweating. You're going to, you're going to feel like you're going to have an aneurysm right. because you don't have the confidence. That's why you, like, no traders will ever make it just taking signals. That's why education in whatever form you get it is so, so important. No doubt about that. You can get it from everywhere. I spent a lot of time through about three or four months just reading books and just watching YouTube. And I didn't pay anyone. I didn't trade. I wasn't really looking at charts like on my own other than what I would see on YouTube videos and I would just take notes and when I didn't understand something I'd just go over to Google and I'd start Googling it and it just led down a giant rabbit hole of <laughs> things that I didn't know, didn't know anything about and then finally I realized like I probably should look into getting a mentor and I've gone through a couple of them before I stumbled on the Team Bull page and then that mastermind class and really that masterminds class is what had turned it all in a different direction for me. And that's, it's still going in that direction. That's so awesome, dude. And I think, too, that um, one thing that can help is, like, you know, information is abundant, right? But it's having it explained in different terms and really being able to shift it to what molds to you right. is the key to that. And that's why I think things like the mastermind are so helpful. And so in general, like, we talked about this, too. I want to mention this before I forget. That even with the best education in the world, like we could, let's say you joined Mastermind and we ran it for 10 years straight, right? Just everyday education. Even if we give you the best education every day, you have to buy into what, like to yourself, to, right. you know, to putting in the time and effort, to putting in the screen time. And that's something you did, which I think is phenomenal. You know, you went through the pain, built a small account, put in the time for education and it's paying off now. And I just think that's, it's, it's really cool to see. Thanks, man. From an outside perspective. Awesome. It really, it's it's a good feeling to know that if you s stick with something and really put your mind to it, you can do it for sure. Heck yeah. So one more point I wanted to touch on was psychology. So when you, I guess, have, have big days 
or small days. Do you have any sort of routine after you trade? Do you go and recap your trades? Do you do anything to like calm yourself or like to, I mean, what's like, what's your process after winning a big trade or maybe even losing a bigger trade than you would like? And what's so, some advice you could give? So I guess now, and this is, this is a newer thing, something I've been doing for the last couple of months. Um, with buying this business, I'm extremely busy and my day can start, you know, at, at 9 a.m. And so I will just shut my computers off and I'll go about my day. But then the next morning I get up at 4.30 and I try and be on my computer around 5, 5.15 and I will import all my trades up to Tradezilla. And I will go over my day, previous day's trades that morning of the day that I'm about to trade because then... You know, I can really touch on the things going into the new trading day that I either did well or did poorly on the previous day and kind of just go back and look over, you know, my last week or my last couple weeks, maybe some other days that I had been trading not well and try and focus on the things that I'm not doing so well and either stay away from them or improve on the areas that I know I can improve on. And uh, I guess that's really what has been helping me or propelling me to get to where I am now. Cause before I would just stay mad and, <laughs> or I'd be overly happy and that just doesn't help anyone or anything. And, and the idea too, that people want to make money trading, right? They want to change their life trading, but they're not willing to go back and spend 10, 20 minutes a day recapping the trades, looking at, okay, let's take a look in the mirror. What did I do? Right. What did I do wrong? And if you're not doing that, if you're not taking responsibility, accountability, you're, you're not going to make it. Yeah, for sure. And that's that's really probably the biggest thing in all of it. You have to be able to understand where you messed up and why you messed up and how you can improve. And if you don't think that you messed up, then there's going to be no improvement to make. And I, I, I agree with you. That is the biggest thing. So it's so hard, especially when you're losing. It's easy to go back and look after you've won, after you're up a few hundred bucks, thousand bucks for the day. But it's hard to look look in that mirror and say, damn, I messed up, you know, I made a big mistake, you know, and, and really take that mistake for what it is. Right. But that's where a lot of people have their downfalls. They won't take accountability. It's the market's fault. It's their mentor's fault. It's the moon and, you know, retrograde's fault. <laughs> it's anyone else's know, fault, uh, but their own. And, you know, with that mindset, you're never going to make it trading. So just sure. to hear that that's a part of your everyday routine is, you know, another reason why you've had the success. Yeah, for sure. I've got a ways to go. I really... I've got a long journey ahead of me, but it's looking a lot more bright now than than it had at one point on this road. And it can get real dark sometimes <laughs> on the trading road. For it sure. Get, it can get real dark. Quick. And so I think, too, um, I, I want to touch on position size as well. When you were down, you know, consistently losing, I guess, did it help you to lower your position and focus more on principle? Or did, you know, like, what was your process with 100%. That? And so I guess the waves that I would go through is... I was just sizing up too much. Like I do good one, two, maybe five contracts and I would start consistently doing well. And then I'm like, all right, I can take, I can trade 15, 10, 15 contracts. And I would enter the trade thinking about the money and not thinking about what I need to be doing. And it would backfire on me and I would start the cycle. And it was just a cycle of that's what I was doing. Trading with small size, building up small gains. And then, just throwing too much money at it and losing it all. That's the vicious cycle that so <laughs> many traders go through, man. So, so many. So, yeah, now I'm just pretty much sticking. I guess I have a max position size, and I rarely even get to that. There's about 15 contracts, but if I can get up to even 10, I'd be happy. But now, I, I normally, the chart doesn't give me as much as I would like for it to give me, and I'm just taking the profits off five. You know, once, maybe two trades a day, and that's all you need. That's less is more. Yeah. Quality over quantity. So as we wrap this up, I want to hear, do you have any specific or broad trading goals, whether it be with principal, monetary, maybe supplementing your business, more businesses? Like, what are your goals going forward, and just what, what are your plans? I think really... I want to start getting a diversified like dividend portfolio. So I want to start funneling some money into that. I want to get into real estate and stuff. Uh, really, what I want to do is be able to just not work for, you know, a few months and just go travel and, 
you know, trade on the road. Like I've traded, I've taken a few vacations and I've traded all the times that I've left. And sometimes they've gone well, sometimes they haven't, but I was still getting to the point where I am now. I was in New York a couple of weeks ago. It was a short week, a four day week. And I think I made just a thousand dollars just chilling in the hotel room over the week on vacation. So that's cool. You know, that's it's a awesome. good feeling. <laughs> It's a, it's a damn good feeling. Yeah, for sure. You're doing it from wherever in the world. Yep. Now, I, I say that I always have to add in this part too. Personally, I love trading from home base. Yes, you can trade from anywhere in the world if you have a laptop. Um, but I feel like there's just something to be said. And this is just me. Maybe you love trading. You know, there, I know people that are like, oh, I love trading in hotel rooms and, right. you know, and on beaches and, you know, in a hammock and a tree and <laughs> the jungle, whatever. Um, but... I think that it is cool. You have the freedom to trade wherever, but you just got to make sure wherever you're trading, whether it's, you know, in the, in the hammock and the jungle or in your hotel room or at home that you were very confident with your setup. You have trust in your, your internet connection, right. your, in your execution, and that you really feel calm with how you're trading and in the yeah, situation. It's, it's definitely, <clears throat> it's definitely not the same as when I'm trading at my house. You know, it's definitely smaller size and yes. way less trades, but, I think, and I'm still real new, so I just like like the idea of trading and being able to trade, you know, anywhere that I travel to. And what you just said, you're real new. You've been trading for over 15 months now. I think that that's very cool that you say that because you have a long-term outlook on it. Yeah, There's so many traders that think that it's one or two months in and you're making thousands. You're still calling yourself new and you're over a year in. like, And, and that's good. We're right. in the long-term game. 100%. You know, this a year, two or three years or four years really isn't that long in retrospect. You know, people spend four years getting a bachelor's degree. You know, spend five years becoming a journeyman plumber, right? Five to seven years, whatever it is. Like all these different jobs that pay well or that have long-term potential, people will spend four, five, six, seven years doing it. But with trading, apparently it's only three months. And if you're not making money, it's a scam. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I so see I, it all I, the time. I liked hearing you say that, and it's it puts things in perspective that you have a long term outlook on this, and that that's why you're going to succeed. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate all you guys, Team Bull, everybody. You guys really helped me <laughs> come a long way with my trading, and even outside trading, just like the discipline that I see in your guys' lives, and the positive vibes that are in the Discord. All of that stuff translates. You know, it's all what you feed your mind. So all that stuff translates into the rest of your life. Absolutely. All it's, if you, if you want to be a millionaire, you know, you surround yourself with four, you're probably going to be the fifth. Right. Right. So I think that's a really cool part awesome, of our man. community too. So I think that's probably going to wrap us up for our, for our speaking today, but thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Appreciate having you here and your, your story is amazing. I can't wait to catch up. Obviously talk every day in the discord, but hear your progress in the next six months year and yeah thanks man i really appreciate you giving me this opportunity i hope it helps some people especially coming to bonos and get myself some pasta yeah of course heck yeah so that is going to wrap us up today can we're going to have episodes of this every single week different traders entrepreneurs and real people real results focus so appreciate you guys being here make sure if you haven't already you hit that like and subscribe button below tap in to all of our free education Let's learn and get rich together. Peace.